Harriet Peck uh, was uh, impressive um, anti-slavery activist from Rhode Island. Um, as a quite a young woman in Rhode Island, she had been a member of Women's Anti-Slavery Society, um, was writing petitions, and um, a real leader in her local community in Rhode Island, um, producing uh, things for anti-slavery fairs, um, subscribing to all kinds of subversive literature. Um, and Harriet was recommended um, by a well-respected uh, friend, Roland Green, um, from Rhode Island, who had, Roland had visited um, friends in North Carolina and had a real concern for friends in North Carolina and wanting them to maintain their presence as this peculiar people in North Carolina who were against slavery. Um, and he uh, at, visited North Carolina in the early 1830s. We have um, some documents um, from him from 1832 that are very moving. Um, and he was um, in contact with the founders of New Garden Boarding School, which later became Guilford College. Um, and they were asking his advice on curriculum and teachers and so forth, and he suggested that Harriet Peck would be a good one for their initial, um, initial faculty. Um, she came down, um, she was still in her 20s, um, but you know, educated and prepared to be a teacher here. Um, and she wrote letters to her family in Rhode Island throughout her, her two years here, um, describing her classes, but also describing her observations of the community, Quaker responses to slavery, um, her own responses to, to those observations. Um, it's also through her letters that we know that um, even though it was illegal and we don't have other documentation of it, um, that individual friends were continuing to um, teach African Americans um, through literacy initiatives with, um, with part-time schools. Um, and we know that uh, Quakers in this area were having access to some of the leading northern anti-slavery publications, including Garrison's The Liberator, which was controversial even in anti-slavery circles because Garrison was calling for the immediate end of slavery rather than gradually letting things work through legal systems. Um, and Harriet Peck was definitely a Garrisonian in her outlook. Um, and um, one of the more exciting things that gets documented through her letters is the fact that New Garden Boarding School was taking steps to um, use uh, exclusively uh, free produce, meaning acquire goods needing for the operating of the institution um, through um, vendors that were not using slavery to produce the goods. Um, so a, kind of a, an ethical purchase policy. I mean, we now hear that now with uh, schools working to divest of, you know, we had 1980s schools divesting of uh, investments in South Africa or today in divesting of um, goods that are um, profiting from fossil fuel industry or, or other types of, um, types of things. Um, in the 1830s, the school was looking at ways to acquire um, goods for the school that would not have um, involved providing profits to, to the institution of slavery. Um, so that was, that was a pretty exciting thing to have confirmed um, and to know that, um, that she was supporting that and working with that um, in addition to the more traditional um, reading, writing, and arithmetic that she was um, assisting scholars with. Harry Peck, on her days often it would travel, she, she did travel to Salem and she has some reflections on the Moravians. She also traveled to uh, the Jamestown community here in Guilford County um, and she uh, at that time period you know, would have met um, several members of the Mendenhall family. I think the particular incident you're speaking of is um, actually not the, not the Mendenhall plantation that is now a historic site, um, that was the Richard Mendenhall house which she would have visited as well. Um, but Harriet is especially um, descriptive of her encounters with um, Delphina and George C. Mendenhall. Um, their house is now under what's now High Point Lake. 
Um, but George C. Mendenhall is the, the gentleman I mentioned earlier who was a attorney and legislator and kind of leading member of the community who um, brother to Richard Mendenhall, who was a well-respected Quaker, um, had grown up in a Quaker family. Um, but George, um, his first marriage was to, uh, to a slave owner. And he, um, his membership at Deep River Friends was discontinued at the time of his, um, his first marriage. And he never rejoined Friends. However, he, um, his second marriage was to a Quaker woman minister which she, she did have to explain herself a bit, but um, it, these kinds of decisions were often done on a case-by-case -case basis, and apparently she provided a, a strong enough case that she was, she was still a Quaker minister. She herself was not engaging in slavery. Um, she loved her husband, but they realized there was that, that added complication. Um, and um, Harriet was just completely baffled by Delphina's decision to marry George and um, could not understand how she, how you know, the family wasn't constantly just berating him for, for still owning slaves. Um, there, we do have correspondence, especially during, um, after George's death, Delphina working to ensure that any remaining um, Mendenhall slaves um, were able to be at a place of security and freedom. Um, as I mentioned, a number of them resettled to Logan County, Ohio, um, writes about that. But that would have been several years after Harriet would have, would have interacted with the couple.